Hello, um, so this is going to be a short video about my decision to buy an electric vehicle and which one I decided to go for. So like a lot of people, I saw the Model 3 and I thought, wow, these have come a long way. Um, I've decided to put a reservation down on a MG electric vehicle. And I'm, I think quite like quite a lot of people will be thinking MG do electric vehicles or MG are still going. But this one actually looked really good. Um, the, the offer on at the moment's really amazing. So my journey started with Tesla 3 designing and like most people I looked at the um, basic car and I was like, it was 39,900 at the time, it's gone down to 36. I thought that's pretty good, but it didn't have everything. Like the range was good, um, but it wouldn't be enough really, I, I think. Um, well, that sort of money you want it to be able to do everything and um, once you started upgrading so if you went to the long range it, it went up to another five grand and then you're thinking well should I spend a little bit more three grand more and get performance and that's got got uh, mad stats so 3.2 seconds acceleration but then practicality came into it um, and once I put in the extra settings I've got to a really high number um, you'll see that in a second, put autopilot on, all that sort of stuff, and I was like, can I really afford to spend 56, 57 grand on a car which doesn't have a practical boot and is expensive to insure? The Model Y looked good, um, and I thought, right, so maybe I should get an in-between car. Um, was that a hybrid? I didn't really want a hybrid because there are too many drawbacks of having both technologies in the car. Um, so I looked at the other electric cars on range and got the Nero and the uh, i3, which I think is a fairly ugly car. Um, you'll see in this picture. I've got the Nero and the Hyundai. Um, I've forgotten the name of it now, but they're pretty much the same car. And then you've got the i3, which has got a weird front to the car which I don't really get. And they, they're a bit cheaper than the Tesla. You don't, they, you get all the options included, so it, does, it works out about 32 grand for those cars. So I'm not gonna knock those cars. They've got amazing range, 282 miles, and guarantees similar to what you'll see in a minute. Um, but they are pretty much the same price as a Tesla. And if you're gonna spend that much money, um, potentially probably would just buy a Tesla. The advantage it does have is it's got a big boot, it's more of a practical normal car. So let me show you the car which I, I was looking at. So at the moment these guys um, have a really good offer. So it's an MG ZS, I forgot the name at the start, but it's from £21,495 after the plug-in car grant which is the government one which all the cars get and MG are matching that grant so you get another three and a half thousand pounds off. Now that is obviously a lot cheaper than any of the other cars we've seen and I'm going to use this as a company car so I'll get a tax off that as well which is great. Um, it does have a lot shorter range 163 miles but for me actually for now that's all right because 163 miles will cover my normal work trips which are 40 miles uh, going and 40 miles coming back so 80 miles happy days and then for occasional trips where I need to travel further I can use a supercharger and the city range is expected here to be 231 while the combined range which I'm hoping is mainly 50-50 motorway driving and city would be about 183 and if you have to use a charger you can use a charger there's two models, um, the exclusive, which is £2,000 more than the Excite, and this blue colour is something that they're trying to push, but I'm not really um, buying. There's a little promo video, um, which I think is a bit naff. It doesn't show you much about the car, apart from that new car colour, which, again, I'm not going to get that colour. Um, it looks a bit old-fashioned to me, but maybe it's different in real life. Um, nothing really in this video of much interest. What I would say is the credits at the end um, make me think it's a Warner Brothers production. I don't know 
if that's a good or bad thing. But, you know, tickled me a bit. Right, so if you're rapid charging, you can charge this um, up to 80% in 40 minutes. That's pretty good. I mean, you can get faster charges for Teslas. Um, it's a level 2 port. Um, you can get level 3s, which are the superchargers. Um, but for 40 minutes to 80% is pretty good. I'm not going to charge it all in one go to 80% to as a supercharger. I'd probably charge it for 20 minutes and then head off, which is a comfort break, as the Americans call it. Um, so I'm going to talk through all the features and then um, tell you at the end about the reservation. So MG Pilot is the equivalent of Autopilot. It's got um, active emergency braking, lane keep assist, so braking if you're getting very close to the car or if you're going wonky on the motorway, hopefully you can control the car yourself, but sometimes it helps on long journeys. Adaptive cruise control, so if the car in front of you slows down, it will also slow down. Um, traffic jam assist, which I don't really understand what that diagram is trying to say, um, but if you're in a traffic jam, it will just auto correct your speed and match you up to the car. And this last one, I'm also not 100% sure of, but it looks like um, in your blind spot, it will give you a warning or, or correct you if, if you're going to crash into another car. So, exterior. So, these pictures, all in this blue colour, which they're heavily trying to push for some reason. Don't know if they got the paint cheap. Um, but here's a picture of the back. Um, it looks alright. The this clearance is something that I was worried with Tesla, and you get pretty decent good clearance here, so it's not going to scrape anywhere. I don't like this. This is the connecting port. Um, it's a bit ugly, but I think I'm going to have to live with that. Um, and, you know, it's an SUV. It's not going to win any awards for being pretty, but it's, it's all right. Uh, so, this is the interior. I'm going to go through the specifications at the end, but I'll just point out some things here. There's a lot of buttons. Um, compared to the Tesla, like, it's, it's like an old school car. Um, that's not a bad thing necessarily. You've got the window buttons on the side, and uh, well, the good thing is you've got a normal door handle. Um, I don't know what's going on with the door handles and testers, but they're a bit odd. Um, you've got a display which looks kind of like an old Kindle, but I'm hoping it looks better in real life. Um, then you've got the controls in the middle, so that's your alternative gear stick, uh, radio controls. Um, on the left, you've got uh, volume buttons, phone buttons, and then on the right, you have uh, effectively like a little mouse thing. And then you've got these analog controls. Um, but you don't have many electronic displays here, um, so your speed and your, your um, actually, I don't know what the second one is, um, are on, on the um, analog display. Right, then the inside seats look pretty nice. Um, you've got that knob again, you can see there, and you can see the panoramic roof, and that roof is only available on the model, which costs the whole £2,000 more, um, which I'm going to say is a thoroughly recommended upgrade, and I'll talk about the specifications at the end. Um, there's the little knob again, they like that, um, and there's the panoramic roof again, and there you can see it. It's quite a big roof, it's not a Tesla full-size glass but it's really nice and then here's the boot so this is something which was quite important for me um, I don't know why but I tend to transport quite a lot of stuff um, it's big there's a big lip but that goes quite deep and provides you some extra storage so I think it's a good boot it's, it's going to be pretty handy um, so let's crack on the specifications so Here's where I'll spend a little bit more time explaining um, the, the advantages of spending that £2,000 extra. Um, so it's really hard to read on here, so I'm just going to say we've gone through all of the auto things, um, auto drop pilot things, but on the additional model for the £2,000 extra, you get blind spot detection and rear cross traffic. Um, I don't know what either of those are, but I'm assuming if someone walks behind you, it warns you and um, in addition to your parking sensors. Um, right, so then in terms of air conditioning, you get a filter which blocks out odour. I've never had one of those, so that might be good. I should point out my old car was a 10-year-old 
Corolla because I only learned to drive about four years ago, embarrassingly. Um, it's got rain sensor wipers as part of that upgrade, which I also was quite envious of. And it's got the Panic Relic Skyroof, sky which I think is worth £2,000 by itself. Um, so I would definitely recommend the upgrade. But, but there's more, so we'll go on. So you get the speakers. I don't know if they're, if they're any good, but I'm hoping they're better with the upgrade. Um, you've got all the standard things here. Um, rear parking camera, so you don't get that on the standard model. Again, that's probably two or three hundred quid if you try and install it yourself, and you'll probably mess it up a little bit. So, so again, just reasons why I think the upgrade's worth it. Um, the, the upholstery, um, you get, would get a standard fabric one. Some people might like that, but the upgrade comes with uh, better things. The tyres, um, so I quite like the tyres, so they're like a little windmill design. It looks pretty cool. Um, you don't have a spare tyre, so you get the tyre repair kit, which is one of the reasons, if you look back at the uh, interior of the car, give me a second, uh, the, the, that's why you have that extra space. But, you know, that's alright. Most cars don't come with a spare tyre anymore, and at least you get the space given back. So, then there's the height difference, because the sunroof's there, I don't think that's going to cause any problems. Um, no real differences here, no real differences in safety, no compromise in that, either though I don't really know MG cars, what they've been doing for the last few years. Right, so the speed on this car isn't particularly fast. Um, I assume they've limited it to maximise range. Acceleration, uh, if you look at the other reports, is pretty good. It's an electric car, so you've got the torque on there and all the stuff which I don't really understand, but it makes it a lot faster than my old car. <laughs> so the speed, I don't think I'd, I'd be racing above 90 miles an hour. I occasionally push push a little bit above the speed limit, but not that far. Um, and it drains the battery, so no one really in an electric car shouldn't really be driving that fast. Um, the charging seems all right. The warranty, you know, like the Kia, they chuck on the warranty just to make sure um, you're pretty happy with how it's going to go. And um, yeah, so the warranty I'm pretty happy with as a, a comfort factor there. Right. Going to the reservation, they ask for a few details, put your name in, I put myself as the Reverend Green from Cluedo. Um, there's, I don't know his first name, so I'll skip past that. Um, then you just select your version, so there's two versions, I very much recommend you go for the exclusive. And then you can choose the colour, that's your choice, but I would mention that on the previous pages, I've been pointed out at the time, but there is an associated charge which I didn't spot for the different colours. That's pretty standard, but I just didn't see it when I was selecting it. I went for the red, but your own choice. And then you press um, OK, click Terms and Conditions, I'm not going to read through these. But there is a little bit here about the refund, so you put 500 quid down, it's completely refundable. Um, but it also says that they have a right to, to cancel it. It's pretty standard. But um, it also states that the deliveries will be here by, expected to be here by September 2019. Which is interesting because later on when you get the confirmation email back for that deposit, it says six months. Um, and I... I was a bit concerned by that because six months would put me past April and for this year electric cars get a full year allowance if you're buying this car for your business but that wouldn't be permitted if it was past April. But I went to the forums and I saw that someone else had queried this and they are expecting them to be in September so that's unfounded. But anyway, I don't know how it drives. I'm taking a bit of a pump here, but it's half the price of the Tesla, and I figure with the tax allowance, with selling on after probably five years with the seven years warranty, I'm getting an electric car, which will save me petrol, which will be my first introduction to electric cars, let all the technology catch up, and then when I go for my next car in probably four or five years, which would still be under the warranty 